वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स हियर वी आर एट द माइक्रोबायोलॉजी लेक्चर नंबर 18 एंड वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंटीबायोटिक मोड ऑफ एक्शन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी वांट टू टॉक अबाउट द प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस इनहिबिटर्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी द टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस इनहिबिटर्स द 50s इनहिबिटर द 70s इनहिबिटर्स एंड हाउ आर हाउ दिस एंटीबायोटिक्स आर गोइंग टू इंटरवीन इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन इन प्रोकैरियोट्स सो स्टे ट्यून एंड वॉच दिस लेक्चर कंप्लीटली so now it's time to talk about the protein synthesis inhibitors which are the second most important type okay this this type are all the one which are going to prevent the any intermediate or metabolites uh, in the middle but the protein synthesis inhibitors are one of the most important type of antibiotics so here either we have a 50s inhibitor or a 30s inhibitor the 50s inhibitor you can see that uh, this is the one where we can see the 50s ribosomal subunit the 30s ribosomal subunit in the bottom and trna carrying the formal methionine in the very first amino acid so uh, what we can see is that uh, the, the modern amino acids continue to be added one after another stitched one after another and that's how it's going to produce a polypeptide so what we need to understand here is how exactly it is going to prevent example of chloramphenicol uh it's a synthetic form of uh, antibiotic the mode of action it attaches itself to the 50s ribosome and it interferes with the peptide bond formation we discussed that earlier that this formation of the peptide bonds between the amino acids that uh, peptide bond formation is carried out by the 50s ribosomal subunit itself and particularly the 20s r rna that is present in this 50s ribosomal subunit but Uh, this uh, chloramphenicol is going to prevent uh, this 50s ribosomal subunit to carry out the uh, the catalysis of this reaction of transpeptidation and thus preventing the peptide bond formation results in the inhibition of protein synthesis there are few side effects of the chloramphenicol like aplastic anemia and can inhibit the mitochondrial protein synthesis as well okay macrolides Uh, example you know any macrolides they supposed to have a mycin uh, attached to the you know suffix so uh, like erythromycin azithromycin clarithromycin uh, dithromycin and all these are the example of macrolides the macrolides mode of action is that the 50a is reversible binding and they inhibit the elongation and blocks the translocation process so the macrolides are going to be mm, attached with the 50a subunit in such a way is it's not going to allow the trna to read the mrna codon and to progress from one codon unit which is made up with three nucleotides one codon unit to the next codon unit it's not possible thus the codon unit jump is not possible thus the macrolides going to prevent the protein synthesis lincosamides Lincosamides are semi-synthetic, and their sources are actinomyces. An example: clindamycin, lincomycin. These are the example of the drugs uh, among the lincosamides. Uh, they mostly kill gram-positive bacteria. Some of them are enough uh, to go against the uh, anaerobes. Mode of action: it also binds to the 50s subunit, blocks the elongation process, and inhibits the protein synthesis. So exactly the step that is blocked by the macrolides, like mycin types. Okay, so they are going to prevent the elongation process. Elongation means obviously there are two steps. One is a peptide uh, bond formation and this translocation. Peptide bond formation is prevented by chloramphenicol, and uh, the 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 translocation is uh, prevented by macrolides. Then there are streptogramins. There are two groups. One is the non-peptide group. Another one is the cyclic peptide group type. Examples of the first group, non-peptide group, is dalfopristine, and the cyclic peptide type is quinupristine. The mode of action uh, for the group A type distort the ribosome and prevent the tRNA binding with the ribosome and thus preventing the protein synthesis. While for the group B type, uh, which are the cyclic peptide type. quinu pristone pristine that blocks the translocation so you can see that the protein synthesis inhibitors particularly the 50s inhibitors can have either of these two function one it can distort the ribosome in such a way so that it's not going to allow the transloc i mean the process of transpeptidation means peptide bond synthesis can be prevented or it can prevent the uh, translocation that movement uh, of uh, one codon unit from uh the 5 prime towards the 3 prime so in both the way it's going to prevent the the movement of ribosome and it's going to misread uh, the the codon misjudgment of the codon 
and it results in inhibition of protein synthesis and uh, we can use both of them synergistically together so if you use group a along with group b they work together better than individual of this drug work alone okay we call them as a synergistic act now we are going to see the 30s inhibitors we've seen the 50s inhibitors because 50s inhibitors are involved in the uh, transpeptidation reaction or the translocation process so it's going to be inhibited by both those steps but the 30s inhibitors are doing their different mode of the job and 30s inhibitors what they will do in this case you can see the 30s inhibitor can cause uh, the misreading of mRNA can cause the false binding of the mRNA to the 30s subunit because uh, the mRNA is going to interact with the uh, 16s rRNA which is a part of the 30s ribosomal subunit and this 16s rRNA interacts with the mRNA with a specific region uh, and amino acid interactions there and that is uh, inter that interaction is very important um, and that interaction that that particular sequence is present in the mRNA called the shine dalgarno sequence with which they, they interact with the 30s RNA and that's the very first set of uh, ribosome assembly is, is with the, the mRNA along with the 30s subunit so if 30s inhibitors are working it's going to prevent the assembly and 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 protein synthesis complex formation problem so example aminoglycosides again uh, it adds mycin as a suffix streptomyces is the source example streptomycin gentamicin neomycin amican uh, amicacin Tobramycin. These are all mycin antibiotics, and you know, whenever you see mycin antibiotics, they will be, they must be protein synthesis inhibitors there. So either 50s inhibitor or 30s inhibitor. We've seen few mycins to be 50s inhibitors earlier. Now we are seeing few mycins here as a 30s inhibitor. Uh, it binds to the 30s re irreversibly. That is one of the biggest challenges there because the other mycin we saw, the 50s inhibitors, their binding with the ribosome is reversible. The 50s binding. Uh, by the mycin antibiotics are reversible but the 30s binding by the antibiotics are irreversible it changes the shape of 30s unit in such a way that the 30s subunit cannot be reverted back to the earlier structure uh, so 50s cannot bind with the 30s anymore interferes with the initiation process and also interferes with the misreading of mrna codon and leads to the wrong amino acid insertion in the trna and mis addition of the amino acid to the trna so either way it's not allowing uh, the process to continue most of the time it is not allowing the initiation to even start and begin and even though initiation begins it causes the misreading of the mrna codon and it's going to uh, even though it inserts some of the antibiotics those i mean amino acids those amino acids will be wrong so ultimately uh, these are of no use results in inhibition of protein synthesis by interfering with translation side effects uh, toxicity is one of the biggest disadvantages particular toxicity for kidney cells apart from that no much toxic no much side effect is observed then comes tetracyclines the suffix is cyclene the source is against streptomyces so here you can see that uh, mostly the examples tetracycline doxycycline doxycycline is semi-synthetic tetracycline uh, digicycline minocycline oxytetracycline these are all uh, like the natural mode naturally obtained cycline antibiotics tetracycline antibiotics mode of action binds to the 30th subunit reversibly so this binding is reversible okay uh, the binding of this uh, others like neomycin uh, canamycin uh, gentamycin strep uh, streptomycin those bindings are are uh, irreversible but uh, the binding of uh, tetracycline with the 30th subunit is reversible it blocks the trna attachment to the a site okay a site where the charged trna should bring the amino acid that a site uh, is prevented uh, and no trna can bring amino acid there inhibition of codon anticodon interaction results in inhibition of protein synthesis side effects affect bone development and stain teeth in children but bone development can be affected both in children as well as in adults oxazolinidones oxazolidinones oxazolidinones these are new antibiotic and the suffix is zolid <coughs> example linzolid mode of action prevents 30s 50s assembly so this is the target by oxazolidinones so oxazolidinones are those one which is not allowing the 30s unit to bind with the 50s you know there are some 50s other inhibitors 
particularly the suffix uh, seems uh, which are going to also uh, sometimes cause the 50th sub 30th subunit uh, disassembly i mean it, it will not allow the 50th to assemble with the 30th but mostly they will uh, allow the 30th modification but this uh, zolids like linzolids they are going to uh, specifically prevent the assembly of 30th 50th subunit they interfere with the mrna and disrupts the initiation process of uh, protein synthesis results in inhibition of translation and mostly we use them for gram positive bacteria especially the mrsa multi drug resistant staphylococcus aureus as well as the vrsa vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus now if uh, we talk about the bacterial resistance because we have been talking about the different bacterial drug particularly the cell wall inhibitors the protein synthesis inhibitors which are most predominantly used in many diseases in in, in most of the diseases and infections so bacterial resistance is one of the curse that that we have, have to face here because the bacterial resistance uh, the bacteria have different way to pump out some excess uh, anti like excess uh, components out excess antibiotics out of the body they may develop they may have some mutation that leads to uh, the processing of the antibiotic that may lead to destruction of the antibiotic or the bacteria may produce some enzyme which is going to render a structure of the antibiotic inactive like the beta lactamase we saw uh, we saw earlier so you can see that uh, either with the pump antibody efflux pumps so the pumps which are going to pump out the antibody uh, from the bacteria outside and then there are uh, methylate ribosomes so the ribosome sometimes methylate which obscure target and block the binding site or it's going to modify the antibiotic so it cannot bind to the ribosome target properly and in either way in all these way uh, occasion these uh, processes are going to cause the bacterial resistance and that bacterial resistance uh, which is obtained by the bacteria after the gaining the resistance the bacteria no longer becomes susceptible by that same antibiotic anymore so either it's going to produce some enzyme which is going to destroy the structure of the antibiotic or it's going to uh, modify the ribosome in such a way is that the ribosome can no longer su susceptible by the antibiotics or it can modify the antibiotic in such a way so that it cannot bind with the ribosome as a target hit the like button if you like this video because i believe i've explained it uh, fairly simple so if you if you don't like it then put a dislike button and also uh, say in comment that what we want to do and we can do to make it better and uh, but if you like it definitely share it with your friends and please do subscribe to our channel so that we can provide you all this lecture series sequentially okay